thousands of fans of Grammy-nominated rapper and community activist Nipsey Hussle are in a state of shock today. They are mourning the hip-hop star's ultimately and violent death. Uh, Nipsey Hussle was murdered in broad daylight outside a clothing store that he owned in South Los Angeles. And he was killed just before he was about to meet with city leaders and the LAPD about reducing gang violence. He is someone who put our community on the map. Um, people thought that our community was just about violence. Um, and Nipsey put a change to that and he let them know that even though we're from uh, underprivileged communities of poverty, that we can still become something. Social media has been flooded with tributes. Here's a tweet from Issa Rae. Watching Nipsey inspired me to invest and own in our communities. He was a solid man who loved his woman, his family, and his community. This hurts. Atlanta-based DJ Headcrack, co-host of the Ricky Smiley Morning Show and Dish Nation, is with me now. And, and Headcrack, thank you for, for taking a minute with me and just talking about this man that it was so beloved. I mean, this is a, it's a huge loss for the rap and hip-hop community. He wasn't you know, just a rapper. He left this huge social footprint in his hometown of South L.A., investing his time and his money back in the community. Tell me what you know of him and what impact he had on you. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, there's very few situations where someone's music actually transcends music, you know? Uh, Nipsey Hussle's raps and rhymes weren't just words. They were like a call to action for people who listen. And you know, and you saw it in the tweets and some of the posts that people said, it made people want to do better in their own communities. I mean, you're talking about a brother right here who had the opportunity to leave the area of Crenshaw and Slauson, you know, Slauson we grew up at, and no, he kept his businesses right there. He was buying up properties on the block and he was trying to teach and empower people to do the same thing in their prospective mm. neighborhoods all around the world. And that is something that, you know, people don't necessarily walk away from business school with, you know, yeah. like investing into yourself and your own community. And he was a big advocate of that. This is a guy who, I mean, I just spent my morning reading all about him, started a STEM program for inner city kids, owned multiple businesses where he hired people in the community, was involved in rebuilding projects, you know, in the South LA area. And he said he, he, he grew up in gang culture, but that he turned his life around and tried to help others do the same. And, and I know your son, actually got to meet him in Atlanta at one of his pop-up shops. Can you tell me what that was like for him? Yo, my son was completely over the moon when he went to <laughs> Nipsey Hussle's pop-up shop because the type of guy that Nipsey was, he wanted to press the flesh. He wanted to meet the fans and give that love back to the people that showed him love. You know, like, my man has done things in the culture that you've never seen done before. He had an album that he was selling for $100 a pop, only made like a 1,000 copies of it, and people bought him. Jay-Z, I think, bought 100 copies of it. And that's just, I mean, that's amazing. Who else was doing that? And my son took a picture with Nipsey Hussle and he was so frustrated that like he had a stupid expression when he took the photo, but he was still excited that he got a chance to meet his legend. Yeah. And the cool like connectivity point was that was a rapper that we both liked. Mm. You know, that's where we're at within the culture where like parents and kids are sometimes vibing to the same artists. And, and did. that's rare. He, he was also a family man. He just had this baby boy with uh, actress Lauren London. They were both profiled in the, the March issue of GQ. Lauren's well known for, for her role in the classic film ATL. Uh, for people who, who don't know who, who this man is or was, how, how do you think he should be remembered? I think he should be remembered as a visionary. I mean, a lot of times people throw the, uh, you know, the term legend or icon around a little too loosely, but Nipsey Hussle truly was that. And, you know, he may not necessarily have been as commercially successful as Tupac, but his impact is just as great, if not possibly bigger. I mean, he was getting ready to rock the world with this whole documentary that he's putting together uh, with, uh, about Dr. Sibby and the trial that he... Um, underwent back in 1985 where he proved that he had the ability to cure AIDS and you know the information was kind of suppressed and a lot of people feel like you know that you know that project he was working on made him a marked man but you know that's a deeper conspiracy that you know we don't got time for right now but <laughs> it's great to know that you know guys like Nick Cannon and others are looking forward to pick up Nipsey Hussle's work and continue on with it and you could just look through social media through the hashtags like people are this, Pharrell, this, I saw a Pharrell tweet where he was talking yes. about he was just shooting a video with him like the week of or the day before, you know, I just couldn't, all the people who show the love on social media for this man, um, it, gone too soon and leaving behind a, a beautiful family as well and so many fans. Headcrack, thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Likewise.